Hey everyone, Samosasaurus 6 here and welcome back to another video. Uh, quite a while since I saw you last time, but I hope you're all keeping well and um, staying safe and it's very weird year that we're having. Wearing a mask, obviously, importantly, um, but doing okay. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Today, I thought I'd go through um, one of my favorite uh, pieces of merch and this is the Jurassic Park official souvenir magazine. I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit so you can see it. So this thing, is or was my bible back in 1993 um before the movie came out in england it actually came out, came out in july and, and everywhere else it came out in america it came out on june the 11th so i got this before i saw the film and this was my bible i used to carry this thing around with me everywhere i used to read it every chance i got I'm very protective over it as you can see it's in uh this uh uh, plastic sleeve but this magazine is just have so much um really really so many good memories it's just such a good magazine the official jurassic park uh, movie souvenir magazine by tops and um, you might have this one and you might have a different cover this is the uk one so it's two pounds fifty there but um this was released um everywhere and they had different covers towards it so i i have a, an american version uh, but it's shrink wrapped somewhere but this is a uk one and um this is made by tops some versions actually came with um the comic book the tops comic and also some of the trading cards but this one i just got like this um and this was the one that was uh, in the uk um such an amazing magazine so many good memories with it i haven't seen it in quite a while so i'm excited really excited to go through it with you today and review it so let's jump straight in so as you can see there's the cover amazing cover and look at that image this image is so iconic and this is this image is one of the the, the pictures that i saw most of and i just just incredible just incredible just look at that that's such a jaw dropping like you look at it and you just stop in your tracks because just look at it man look at it amazing um so here we got some pictures um very common pictures now obviously but back then these were just like really like stood out and iconic so you got ravenous raptors terrifying t-rex heroic human savage spitter someone really loves the alliteration a really cool cover to just get you into the, the mood of it 150 photos tell the complete story let's jump straight in i'm gonna have to carefully take the shrink wrap off not shrink wrap what am i talking about plastic sleeve so we can go into it okay so let's have a look through finally so two pounds fifty bargain for this magazine so here we can see oh, what a great image of the Velociraptor there. Look at it. Such a brilliantly shot picture. And I love the lighting and how cool it looks. And oh my God, just incredible. Just an incredible picture. So here we got the contents. And a lot of these pictures you will recognize are from the Tops trading cards, which I have reviewed on my channel link down below. And um, so they have reused quite a lot of them. But these are the iconic Jurassic Park pictures that you saw on a lot of um, merchandising. And it was pretty much everywhere. So welcome to Jurassic Park, yeah, contents, complete movie story, and then you got dino close-ups, art of Crash McCree, which is my favorite section in the whole magazine because I just love the artwork from Crash McCreary and that's what got me into drawing dinosaurs and drawing and his art style was incredible. A little bit on bringing dinosaurs back to life, the comics and trading cards, obviously, because it's by Tops. So here we've got a really nice image of the map of Isla Nublar, which is amazing. And again, didn't have anything like this back in the day. So to see this was really interesting and cool to see, especially because um, I got this magazine before I saw the film. So when I was, when I read through it, I got all the information from here. So I used to study this map a lot so when i went to see the film i used to try and retrace the steps and see if it was legit and to see if um the tour was the same in the in the movie uh, following this map so it was really interesting to see and i love little icons as well You've got your brachiosaurus gallimimus triceratops metriocanthosaurus so it was also really interesting to see dinosaurs that weren't even in the film be here as well and i love that we got the iconic Oh gosh, Baryonyx as well. There was a Baryonyx and Isla Nublar, so cool. So it was really cool to see these like um, 
skeleton logos for the for the dinosaurs. We know the T Rex and the and, and the Velociraptor claw, but it was really cool to see the other dinosaurs have their own little icons as well. So that's really cool, and I love this painting. I really should get this painting um, blown up and framed one day because it's a really beautiful painting. I don't know how accurate it is now. Obviously, we've got Jurassic World and we've got um, loads of new um, Island Nublar mock-ups and stuff. So I don't know how accurate this one is, but I've always loved this one. Don't know where Mount Subo is. Uh, probably somewhere here. I'm not sure. I'm not really too good with the, the uh, accuracy and logistics side of Iron Nubler and stuff but um, it's really interesting to see how much it's changed as well over the years too. So here we've got our um, introduction we've got a really nice um, image of dinosaurs and their scales. So this is the maquette obviously isn't it from Stan Winston so that's cool. There's a human there. No Dilophosaurus unfortunately but we have a Parasaurolophus and a Gallimimus there and a baby Triceratops, it's awesome because obviously that whole scene with the babies for tri bleh, Triceratops got cut out, so it's cool that in here we do get to see quite a bit of it. So we got an introduction um, about Michael Crichton and how the book came about, which is cool. Got introduction to the characters here, brilliant. Found out all about the characters and all their um, names and everything through here. So again, this is such a really good guide uh, to have before and after the film as well, because um, it tells you a lot about all the characters and, and the actors as well. So I think everyone is there. Um, anyone missing? Dr. Wu's missing. Uh, you can't have Jurassic Park with Dr. Wu, so he's not there. But um, everyone else is. I think that's it. Even Dennis Rodri Dodgson's not there, but he's a minor character anyway. But that's really cool. Oh my gosh, of course, where's where's Ray Arnold? Hello? How can you not have Samuel L. Jackson? That's crazy. See, he, he it's, now he would be, like, plastered all over it because he's such a big actor. He was a big actor back then, but no Samuel L. Jackson? Come on. Uh, a shame, but that's cool that you get all the characters there. So this is basically talking through just the, the opening, and there's a nice little um, storyboard snippet there with the original opening of the, you know, see, I, I've... It, all this stuff is just in my head as common knowledge now because I used to read all of it from here and the making of Jurassic Park book which is another really great book as well but this one um, I, I found out all this information that it, the, the movie was going to open with a universal logo and then it turns into an eye and the raptor eye see as you can see there pre-production storyboard drawing shows an early concept of how the universal pictures globe logo would transform into the beast staring eye which I thought was a really cool way to open the film but um, I still love how the film opens anyway so Nice big shot there of the workers and the raptor paddock. So again, digging up the past there. I love this picture of Nedry <laughs> shouting about Dodgson there. Really nice cool image of um, Alan and Ellie. So it's cool that you get to see little pictures here. This is all about now Jack Horner, who was the paleontological consultant for the film. And it's cool that they talk about real life paleontology there. Haven't had a read through this, but obviously paleontology and dinosaur um, facts and information and science has changed so much since Jurassic Park came out. So it'll be interesting to read this um, again and see what's changed. Here we go, the arrival. And uh, nice image there. Okay, it's all from the trading cards. Love that. Nice um, image of the Brachiosaurus uh, maquette from Stan Winston and a really good little snippet of the storyboard of when they see the Brachiosaurus for the first time. I like it. Uh, so again, it's talking through the movie. So they arrive there and then it just stops for a couple of pages on the dinosaurs itself. So there's the Brachiosaurus again, lovely close up there of the maquette and a uh, little drawing by Crash McCreary there, really, really cool. And I love this painting of the Brachiosaurus as well. I'm not sure if this is from Jurassic Park or not. No, it says painting by Brian Fransack, but so cool anyway to see that because they do kind of look like the um, Jurassic Park Brachiosaurus, so that's cool. And you've got a nice an an anatomical drawing of the, um, the Brachiosaurus there with information there. Compounds, so get a nice spread of them looking at the eggs. You've got a nice image concept drawing there of the incubating um, uh, facilities and where they keep the embryo, so that's really cool. Uh, and then there. Uh, sitting for the tour and in a nice little picture of um, the baby raptor. This was one of my favorite pages because it's the Velociraptor, which is um, my favorite animals. Um, the Jurassic Park version, obviously. Really cool image of a striped Velociraptor there, but all information about the Velociraptor. Nice uh, pic of the maquette there, and I love this um, 
this was the model or this was one of the animatronics? I think this is the anim animatronic they use in the movie. Awesome. And I really love this because if you zoom in close and have a look, I thought the Velociraptors were grey, but they do have a little bit of brown tinge in there as well, which I really liked. Um, don't get to see too much of that in the film, but I really like that because they always come across as grey in the film, but even there you can see a little bit of brown and tinge, which I really love, and not all grey. So that's really cool. And I love this as well. This is really cool. I like that because it's like a flick book kind of thing and it looks really cool. That'd be really cool to have up um, as a poster, I think. I really like a banner. Is that so cool that it does that? Anyway, um, really cool. Um, Velociraptor image there and it doesn't really talk about um, the fact that Oh yeah, it does talk about that the Velociraptor was um, not really a Velociraptor and um, obviously more like a Utoraptor. But um, doesn't really tell us too much that actually the Velociraptors in there weren't 100% accurate. Tour begins, again all of these pictures there are from the trading cards. Look at that awesome image there as well of the gates. So here we go, stopping off uh, for the Triceratops and lovely image there. And then there's Steven Spielberg there and then there's Anne there. So this is another really cool image, especially after um, knowing and finding out that the baby Triceratops scene was completely cut out. Uh, the fact that they have a baby Triceratops model in here is really, really cool. Look how cute that is. It's really nice to that it would have seen that. Maybe we get, I mean, it's cool that we've got baby, like, um, I don't know what the animal is in Fallen Kingdom. We've got a baby something or other. I'm so sorry, I can't remember. But it's it's nice that we've got baby dinosaurs in the later movies, but this baby Triceratops I've always loved. We get to see something like this again. Oh yeah, there's a scene in Jurassic World where there's a little kid riding a baby Triceratops as well. Well, it's not a baby, it's a little bit older, but this baby I love, it's really cute. Anyway, so there's information about the Triceratops there. You've got a nice, um, Drawing by Crash McCurry there. Here's a T-Rex. Brilliant, an amazing picture of that T-Rex coming out. And again, this image as well was really um, like an iconic one for me. Now, what I remember about Jurassic Park is, especially in 1993, they really tried their hardest not to show any of the uh, CGI dinosaurs, or they tried not to, but if they had to, it was always the Stan Winston anim animatronics. So I think they obviously wanted to keep it as a surprise um, that the CGI was kept under wraps until after the movie came out. But a lot of the merch and a lot of the production photos and stills and promotional photographs for Jurassic Park around the time of 1993, they had nothing um, showing of the CGI, which is really good in retrospect. So again, having this magazine um, and reading this magazine before the movie came out, you thought it was just going to be animatronics and puppets, which obviously we'd seen quite a lot of anyway. So we thought we were just going to go in to see a movie with animatronic dinosaurs in it. So that was really good that they kept it under wraps. So when you do finally see the CGI dinosaurs, you really are like, wow, it really strikes you as something you've never seen before. So that's cool. These are still really amazing images and really cool of uh, the uh, animatronics. So I'm not saying that the, the impact was lessened. These images are amazing and seeing these animatronics in motion was just absolutely incredible. Um, and these images as well, just like really like this one as well. Look at that. Look how terrifying that is. These images were really awesome to see. This one, I just can't get my eyes off it. This is such an iconic image and it's just terrifying. And seeing this and not knowing what was going on in the scene um, just used to fascinate me. Like, look at it. What? Like, and that T-Rex is just like, I've got to say that that Stan Winston original T-Rex animatronic is like the greatest Tyrannosaurus Rex portrayal I've ever seen. I know it might not be accurate or whatever, but my goodness, that design is just incredible. And just look at it. It's just awesome. So seeing this before the movie, Amazing, absolutely incredible. There's the uh, art of Crash Mercury again, really, really cool. His art and his drawings really influenced the way I draw stuff and all my dinosaurs now kind of look like ones that he would, would draw and kind of look like the ones from Jurassic Park. If you see my artwork, his drawings was just inspired me to just draw in pencil and that's all I like to draw in these days. So really awesome artwork there of the T-Rex. And again, this Raptor image as well, absolutely amazing. 
I love it. And when you see these images, especially before the film and even after the film, they, they you know, your imagination like really goes like, oh my gosh, you know, like this was the original paddock before they moved the, the, the velociraptors to the, to the other enclosure in the film. And, and look how like nasty they are and look how many there are. And you know, your mind just kind of sets up of what life was like in the park before the movie and how they used to feed them. And th this reminds me, this image of, um, you know, when Muldoon says um, they were attacking the fences when the feeders came, this is what it reminds me of. So it's really cool. Like all the concept art in films and stuff, especially, um, you know if you if, if there's just scenes you don't see in the movie they kind of add to the lore and stuff and i love that so this is a really great image again by crash mccreary again used a lot in promotional um, material and um, pencil cases and that kind of stuff so again another amazing spread with all his artwork and it's really good to see all uh all, all the iconic artwork in here i love this baby raptor image as well and again, this all talks about Mark Crash McCreary and where he got the ideas from and etc. cetera. Um, love this image of the spitter as well in the Brachiosaurus, love the profile in the side view, that T-Rex as well. I love how the T-Rex changes over the course. So it kind of looks like that, but originally it looked like that. So I kind of like this. Uh, Parasaurolophus as well. I only see a little bit of in um, Jurassic Park, but the Lost World, definitely more of, and I'm glad it's that design. And um, there's the original Jurassic Park Triceratops. But again, if you look at the Lost World one, it's slightly different. I think I read somewhere that the model's based on the Stegosaurus from the Lost World, but I like this Triceratops the best and this Goliath. Basically, I like all the dinosaurs in the first movie the best, if I had to go there. Um, again, a little um, page and spread even of uh, the T-Rex. And again, the maquette there, amazing. Absolutely amazing, perfect design, I've got to say again. Absolutely perfect design. There's a T-Rex, again, used the promotional picture, um, used quite a lot, but look at that. And there's a front view and there's a little stand there. But look at that, man, look at it. Just incredible design. And I think this is the the, the, um, the maquette that they um, they used to scan in for the, uh, for the uh, big red Kenna T-Rex uh, model. I'm not entirely sure but awesome and I love this image as well. And obviously it's not, not from the film, but it's from Brian Franzak, like the Brachiosaurus painting he did, but still really awesome uh, to see this. Ba pack of T-Rexes, not just one attacking. And again, because I saw this before the film, I kind of thought I seemed like this would be in the film. It doesn't matter if it wasn't, but it really gears you up for, um, for the, and, it, and excites you. So here's spread on Nedry, um, really, really cool. Uh, a couple of images um, with the spitter again not showing too much um just like the t-rex not sh just showing the maquette not nah, no nothing none of the cgi which is really really good that they did that love this image of um the dilophosaurus as well and there's nedry getting his um come up comeuppance really cool um images of the uh maquette there from Stan Winston Studios, really nice front view there as well. Really cool, um, another painting by Brian Franzak of the Dilophosaurus, and we can see that it's the accurate Dilophosaurus. And here it actually does tell us the movie version of the Dilophosaurus varies slightly from his meat era and lived more than 200 uh, eight million years ago. The real one was considerably larger, it didn't spit out and it didn't have a neck floor. So that's good that they, that they explained that. And I love this uh, image of Dilophosaurus with frill and no frill. That's a really cool image though, isn't it? Awesome. By Crash. Brachiosaurus spread there with uh, them in the treetops. And then here we go with the fence action scene. Love this image of the Velociraptor. I did. I had this as a poster as well. Uh, I love this image of the Velociraptor. And I like it because it doesn't really look like a Velociraptor. It looks more like a Deinonychus there as well. So really cool image. And of the eggs there. And a little bit of a snippet from the storyboards. You go with the raptors in the kitchen. Look at that. Look at that image. And you might say that I got a little bit spoiled by reading uh, this um, before the film came out, but as a kid, it's just your excitement just really goes, you know, overboard. And it was still, I didn't find I, I, I kind of felt like I'd seen a lot of this, the stuff when I finally saw the movie, but I still got really excited. And there were obviously so many things um, that surprised me, especially with the CGI stuff. So really cool. I love that silhouette of the uh, raptor in there. Iconic image there of the raptors in the kitchen and Tim hiding. 
another really cool close up of the Velociraptor. And again, just look at the detail in that. Absolutely incredible with these um, animatronics. And I really love this image as well with the DNA on it. Um, and then this scene as well. <laughs> I love that Grant just really casual about it, that the Raptor is poking out. So now we're end, uh, nearing the end. And again, just like the um, Tops cards, they, and again, with a lot of the mid promotion material um, before the film came out, doesn't show you anything about uh, the CGI finale, which is brilliant. It does tell you, so I I, I guess I kind of knew that the, the Raptors and the Rex were gonna fight, but it doesn't show you anything at all. So that's really good. Just shows you that bit. It's the Raptor looking at Grant's butt, which I always used to find funny. But um, yeah, it doesn't show you any of this. You know, you can see the pictures of the, the raptors and the T-Rex at the end of the banner falling. It doesn't show you anything at all, which is really cool. And I love this bit as well, because it shows you how the dinosaurs are made. And again, seeing this before the film came out, you just thought it was all animatronic. So, and a really incredible animatronic. I mean, just look at the detail in that. What's that about Godzilla? There have been other dinosaur movies, but I don't think that anybody's ever attempted to really do it right in full size. This is not Godzilla. Oh, they did use suit work in here, which is cool. They used everything in pretty much, which is really awesome. Suit work, animatronics, CGI, even stop motion images originally. Um, but obviously they went that with the uh, animatics there. Love that image of the, t of the uh, T-Rex and this image of Spielberg. And I love this image used to really terrify me as well. It's just how evil that T-Rex looks awesome image just look at it it just looks incredible i just love that t-rex look at it look at it and this is what i find about the jurassic world i don't know like, it doesn't really you know the the angles of this t-rex doesn't read i don't think the jurassic world one has that um and the dark around the eyes i really I, that's why i love this version it's just just evil looking and i love it it's really cool. I, I don't think the uh, well, Lost World really really nailed it as well. But the, this original T Rex is just just the best one for me, I think. And then this was cool because it talks about older dinosaur movies. And there's Gorgo, if you don't know, that's the um, British uh, rip off of Godzilla, uh, which is fun, I guess. There's Gorgo and the Land Unknown, and there's Gertie the dinosaur. In 1912, the animate, the first animated dinosaur ever put to film. It's really cool. And there's uh, the original Lost World movie from 1927, I think it is. Um, and this is really cool, this part. I love that image of that T-Rex. And the Land of Time. So this was really cool because it kind of gives you a rundown of um, dinosaur movies. So as a kid, I made sure I tried to watch as many of these as possible, which is really cool. Not a lot of, I mean, only a couple of Godzilla ones, even just probably the first one, but it has a whole range of everything. And I tried to watch as many of these as I could. I'll go through it slowly, but um, so you can see, but it's a really good list. It's, if you're a dinosaur kid, um, sorry, dinosaur fan as a kid, um, especially in the nineties, like I was, um, it's really cool to try and rediscover all these old movies. So try to watch out and see whenever they used to come on um, TV to try and watch as many of these as I can. So obviously, because this magazine is made by Tops, it is plugging the um, comic book and that's really cool. Um, that cover is awesome. So it's really cool. I couldn't unfortunately find the Tops uh, comic anywhere as a kid. So my only exposure to it was from this magazine, but I always try to look out for it because I thought it was really cool that they, um, you know, translated the film as a comic. And I love this because I actually thought that was Ian Malcolm. So I'm used to thinking, oh, right, so Ian Malcolm um, was at the beginning um, when they're loading the Raptors in. Because to me, that just looks like Ian Malcolm. Is it Ian Malcolm? I'm not sure if it is. Um, and that's really cool as well because I'm like, oh, right, Ian Malcolm's got a gun. And then there's a character called Jose. So, you know, it was um, cool to see like a slightly different version of the film. Um, in a comic book form, which I always liked. And then at the end, I used to love this as well. It talks about um, the Tops cards, and I love this because of the artwork. Look at that really cool artwork of the Brachiosaurus. And I love this image. I've always loved this image of the Dilophosaurus in front of the uh, Jurassic Park sign. That's awesome. Just look at it. Look how cool it looks as well. Looks like a full size Dilophosaurus as well, not a little juvenile baby one from the film. And again, I love this image of that T Rex as well. Look at that, how awesome that looks. 
such a cool image and I love that it's just stepping on the Jurassic Park and no feeding signs because it's escaped look at that it's just so cool that image and again just showing off the cards which I have reviewed and that's the magazine at the end again I used to love this page as well because it's got so many cool t-shirts that you could have bought and I love them because I love the captions awesome to kill rap attack spitter I never bought any of these because I, I couldn't and um, I asked my mom and she said it was too expensive but I wish I could have because these are so cool and actually I still want to get some of these uh, t-shirts because look how cool they look um, and I love this one with the lightning as well look at that free tattoo with the first 1001 orders wonder if they're still open and still available if I can still buy these huh I love these because it's just so cool and I love this as well if it's not Jurassic Park it's extinct it's, um, the motto and I and I put this out on Twitter I don't think the Jurassic World um, movies have a motto but um, like that but if it's not Jurassic Park it's extinct was the one back in the 90s but anyway there you go that is the Jurassic Park official movie souvenir magazine I think along with the making of Jurassic Park book that this is a must-have and essential purchase for all Jurassic Park fans if you can find it now I've got two I've got a shrink wrapped one um, as well but this is the one I had as a kid but it's all gone a bit yellow um, if you can find it online on eBay um, definitely pick it up it's not too too bad I think uh, I bought a second one for about ten pounds so they are affordable and if you see it definitely get it because it's definitely worth it uh, even though a lot of the pictures are from the um, the cards and the making of Jurassic Park book um, it's really good to have still so if you can find it definitely get it it's really really cool to have anyway um, that's it for this video I think um, sorry I've gone on a bit too long but um, hope you guys stay well and um, stay cool uh, like and subscribe if you can and I'll see you guys next time